Good morning and welcome to Pastor Cheryl Kincaid's podcast slash blog, Wisdom for Today. I'm so glad that you decided to visit me this morning. And today I want to talk to you about the power of a personal profession of faith in Jesus Christ. You know, one of the saddest things that happens to me in the ministry, and it happens quite often, is when a church member will come to me and think, somehow express the fear that their profession of faith in Jesus Christ wasn't enough. They feared that they had prayed the prayer wrong when they asked Christ into their life, or that because there wasn't a moment of conversion they grew up in the church, that somehow they hadn't really accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. And let me assure you that that's false. Let me assure you that your profession is enough. In fact, the Bible tells us it's impossible to please God without faith. Indeed, that no one would come to God unless they had faith to begin with. The mere fact that you're asking your question, am I really saved, proves to me that you are. You don't need to take another trip down the altar to pray to accept Christ. Your first prayer was enough. The mere fact that you pray to him on a daily basis is enough. You know, when the apostles were with Jesus, they were walking one day up to a hill where Jesus was going to have another private conversation with them. And he asked them this very pertinent question. He says, who do they say that I am? And the apostles replied that some say that you are a teacher, and some say that you are Elijah, and some say that you're a prophet. But then Jesus turns to them and asks them this very pertinent question. And let me read from the text. I'm reading from Matthew 16, verses 15 through 18. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you, Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. The rock that Jesus is talking about, and that's also a name for Peter, is his profession of faith, that you are Peter, and upon this rock, your profession that you are the Christ, I will build my church. And I want you to notice in this text, he says, Blessed are you, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, because what was given to you was not revealed to you by man, but by God. In other words, his profession came from God. The mere fact that you're worried about your salvation shows me that you believe, and your belief is enough. And I also want you to notice the scripture says that the gates of hell, all that sin has to offer, every doubt and fear, will not prevail against your profession of faith in Christ as Lord and Savior. Now you guys know I love children's stories. I was a child development major before I went to seminary. And there was one story in Dorothy, The Wizard of Oz, that strikes, that strikes right at the heart of this. It's when she comes upon a fragile church. In this story, Dorothy, the Tin Man, and the Lion are walking through a Chinatown, all made of porcelain. And they come upon a little China girl. And Dorothy, being a little girl, wants to hug the little China girl. And I just want to read to you from the book. The girl screams back at Dorothy, Don't chase me! Don't chase me! She had such a frightened little voice that Dorothy stopped and asked, Why not? Because, said the little princess, also stopping a safe distance away, If I run, I may fall down and break myself. Well, couldn't you be mended? asked Dorothy. Oh, yes, said the princess, but one is never so pretty after being mended, you know. And then they walked carefully through the China country. The little animals and the people scampered out of their way, fearing that strangers may break them. And then they came upon a little church. Dorothy thought that she might like to go inside, but since it was made of glass, she was too frightened that she might break it by standing or sitting in the wrong place. And after an hour or so, the travelers reached a china wall, and it was so high that they could not climb over it by themselves. So they all jumped upon the lion's back, and they managed to scramble on top of it. Then the lion gathered his legs under him and jumped up onto the wall. But, 
Just as he jumped, he upset the China church with his tail, and it smashed into a thousand pieces. That's really too bad, said Dorothy. But I really think we were lucky in doing these people no more harm than what we did, than breaking a cow and a fragile little church. They're so brittle and fragile, you'll know. Brothers and sisters, the church is not fragile. It won't break because someone comes in and stands and sits in the wrong place. Neither will your faith. It's not made of China. It's made of the rock of your profession of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So my prayer for you today is that God will stir up the gift that's inside of you to profess this faith. In 2 Timothy 6, 2 Timothy 1, 6-7, it says, For this reason I want to remind you to fan the flame of the gift of God, which is in you by the laying on of hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Brothers and sisters, as we go forth this next year and seek to serve God, know that your profession is enough. Know that the grace that God has given you to profess Him as Lord and Savior is given throughout this church. I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. God's blessings and have a great day.